Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good? So a really nice day today. Like, not too hot, not cold. Cool. So today, what we're going to learn is HTML. So welcome to Unit 1, uh, where we're going to be putting some stuff in the browser. Say that again? Wait, what did I say? Oh, sorry. <laughs> you need to, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I, I need to drink coffee. Um, so in your calendars, you'll find uh, the event for today, which is HTML introduction. Oh, is it? Yes, here. And we have the lecture notes over here. Okay, so do we remember, um, I, I had already introduced you to HTML, and I want to see how much you remember. Um, who remember, it was, I think it was like 20 minutes of HTML. Yes, Vanille? Uh, okay, when you write in HTML, you start with an HTML tag, at the, uh, the top, and at the end, you close that tag with uh, angle bracket slash HTML close angle bracket. Mm -hmm. Any, anything else? Sure. A head and a body, that's correct. Yes. Uh, Brianna? Nice. Right, correct. We have uh, heading tags that are used for like giving titles to sections in the in the document, and they go from H1 to H6. And the only difference is the size that the uh, the browser will display them with. H1 will be the, like the main tag. You should only have one per page, one H1 per page, and then the it's. Headings are for expressing hierarchy also in, in content, so H1 will be the main one. And then maybe if that content has two subcontents or two subtitles, you can use H2 for those, and so on and so forth. Anything else? So, HTML tag, uh, heading tags, yes, you can. Nice. Um, list, a list that is order and a list that is on order, and those are the OL for order list tag, and UL for unorder list tag. Nice. Yes? How to put an image with the IMG tag. Yes, that's correct. Cool. I think you guys remember quite a lot. And, you know, like, it's, HTML is not a programming language. It's not just like JavaScript. HTML is a markup language. That's what HTML stands for. HTML hypertext markup language. And I was saying that, you probably don't remember, but uh, when I did the the breakdown as of the acronym, which is hypertext markup language, I was saying hypertext means like super text, text that is enhanced in a way. Right? And the markup language is we mark up that text by adding some tags to it that it, that it allows it to become a super text that, that is allow, is, um, it allows to link pages in the internet, display images, display uh, different content. Okay, so these are our goals, creating our first HTML tag, uh, HTML page, um, adding some content to that, adding images, um, and also creating a form because to get user input. Cool, so these are some of the tags that we're going to see. You are familiar with some of them. The paragraph, the p tag, h1 to h6. Um, there are also some um, styling tags, like strong, that will allow you to put text in bold. So that when you want to emphasize something, um, you can use one of these tags. Strong or, oh, emphasis is italics, or italics. And em, strong will be for bold. Order list, on order list, as he uh, mentioned, those, uh, regardless of what type it is, if it's an unordered or an order list, will have 
inside as child's li. And li stands for list items. And every, every tag has its own name that should make sense, like p for paragraph, li for list item. Um, the a tag, the a tag is, it's actually, it actually stands for anchor, um, but we most commonly know it, know it as a link tag. This is what, this is basically, I, if there is one tag that is important in the internet, it's the A tag, because the, the anchor tag is the one that allows to link documents. So say, from my website, I want to link to Google, or I want to get linked to YouTube, and so on. Like when you, when you type in Google something, all these links are, all these links are A tags. In fact, let's, let's look at one of them. So to inspect the, the source, what is called the source of any web page, you could do right click and inspect. Once you do that, your browser will open this thing on the side or at the bottom. Um, and this, what we see here on the left, this area, this is HTML code. And we're gonna learn how to write this code. So if I, if I go deep inside here, See if this allowed me to zoom in enough. I don't know. I'm not sure. You can see here about a tag. This will. This is what constitutes uh, one of the most important tags in the internet that allows to link stuff. Okay. Let's see what else. The image tag um, to display images. The form tag. One of the when you're dealing with social media or even filling a Government form, this is the, the element that is going to take care of that. Like when you're, if we think about when you're on Facebook and when you're on Twitter and you're about to write a tweet, that place where you're putting in that text, that is a form that, that accepts user input. And then uh, similar to OLs that have LIs inside, um, forms will have input tags inside. The input tag is where the actual text is typed. When you are try when you're trying to um, send a tweet, you will find an input. For instance, we could go on Google again. Let's inspect this. This this is where where we type here is an input. Let's let's see it. Right click, inspect. So we can see here that there's a div and right underneath there is an input. See? So inputs are a very handy uh, tag that allows us to receive user input. So basically, if we were building the hangman game, uh, which we, we, we could write uh, in HTML at some point, um, this will be, instead of you having the user type in the common line to like, guess a letter, you have an input text like this, where they were going to put um, a letter. That will be one way. Okay, let's see what else. Um, right, and then we have the line break. Uh, this is for adding new lines in HTML, and we'll see we'll see why this is important. Also, I wanted to try. Um, who here knows about the Pomodoro technique? For productivity, Pomodoro. Yeah. Yes. My, um, yes. Mm -hmm, that's correct. So I wanted to try that, um, and I have these hour glasses here. This one is thirty minutes. Uh, so we're going to work for thirty minutes. So I'm going to go or like the lecture for. 30 minutes, and you're going to do some exercises. Um, and then this one is five minutes. So uh, it's on you to keep me on track because I, I have tried and I forget that I have it running. So I'm gonna turn it, and then once those 30 minutes have passed, we stop, we take a five minute break, and then we come back. Sounds good? Cool. Okay, so in here in the lesson there is no there is a lot of other content that you should discover yourself 
there's no way we can cover everything in class. Um, okay, so as I said, the HTML stands for the Hypertext Markup Language. Uh, it's, you can imagine text with superpowers right, in, the, in the web that allows to display uh, more than just text. So there is this exercise uh, where we're going to edit HTML in the while. So let's go to this to Craigslist. Let's look at the source code of Craigslist. Let's look how it's made uh, through HTML code. So go there and then right click anywhere you want. Uh, also, you can right click anywhere you want and do inspect. But if you want to inspect a specific element, what you could do is hover over it and then click right click inspect on that place. So I'm going to click on New York City, I'm going to click right click inspect and this will show me um, where I clicked. So in the, on the left side it shows me the actual website and on the right side it shows me the HTML code that makes up this website. What kind of tag is this? An H2 and that stands for a heading, heading 2, right? So this is fun because uh, what you can do is you can actually change the content of websites. Because all the code is publicly available, you could change this text to anything you want. So let's do something. Let's, um, let's change this text by double clicking it. Change it to anything you want. Uh, I'm going to change it to my my hometown. Now once I click outside, the text, you see it no longer says New York City. It says Tennessee, which is my hometown. So do the same, change it for your hometown. By double, you can double click on in the middle of the H tag. Double click and then it will allow you to edit. Was everyone able to change the content of the H2 tag? Nice. So let's see what else. Like this is with this, you could have you could go to let's say you go to YouTube. Let's say I created a let's look at one of my videos. Uh, let's look at one of these. And I don't want to play it. But what I could want is what I want is to add more views, even though these are not real. Oh. But because this is HTML code and we know we can look behind the scenes, I could do a right click, inspect, look at where that 12 is, and I'm going to change it for a million. That's one, that's one. And I don't think he. So let's see how it looks. Uh, did you all see a change in yours? But right, now it has one million views. So you can add money to your bank account in this way. <laughs> we, we, we all wish we could do that, right? So, yeah, this is like every website you can look at behind the scenes. Some websites make it hard for you to like figure out how it how it's built on, on uh, behind the curtain. But if um, with what you're going to be learning here, once you look at this code on the on the right, it should start to make a little bit more sense. Cool. So let's do. So we did that. We replaced New York City. Now let's do these exercises. Let's take five minutes to do these exercises. On Craigslist, change the text that says about, change it to anything you want. Change the text that says community, um, etc. So let's take five minutes to go through these exercises. If you have any questions, raise your hand and I can come back.
Okay, how did that go? Yes, camera. How to bypass ads? Yeah, like, cool. go to the link on the first list. It doesn't show me ads. If you go, wait, say that again. If I go to the link I set up on the first list, it uh -huh. skips the ads. Maybe, I don't know. That's not like what's not doing. Uh huh. That would be interesting. There is a way in which you could. Have you seen like those websites that have like those annoying pop ups? Uh, once you once you know how to see the behind the scenes, you could remove them without having to uh, close them. The, sometimes it's annoying because like some some of those are like if you're especially if you're trying to watch like a movie online uh, that has a bunch of ads and like clickbait basically because that's what it is. Like they they want you to click on certain places to take you somewhere else and possibly steal your credit card information. Um, by looking at the behind the scene of a website, you could start to see where those are and just remove them from here. So, okay, so let's look at some, some of you were 
doing it. So there is a few ways in which we can edit stuff in the website. So I, one of the first ones was, let's say changing this title, I can double click on the text and then I put anything I want. All right? And then I can hit enter or click anywhere else and then that text changes. You could also do right click uh, and where it says edit text, you could do the same thing. Edit. So with right click, you have other options, which is edit text, edit as HTML, delete element, copy element, and so on. You could even hide elements. Let's let's click on that one. Now that's gone. Right. Cool. Um, should we do? Any questions here so far? Was everyone able to change the content of, um, of for instance, this Saturday, change it to something else, Sunday? Who can share with me how to change this one? Who can guide me? Yes, Shana. Uh, you go over the S uh -huh. right click. Right -click. Inspect. X. Nice. Now we see the X there. Let's change, and then we can see here. Also, this is also nice that when you hover over other elements, you can see on the left how that blue uh, sort of overlay changes, where depending on which one I'm uh, hovering over. This is a really handy feature to know what you're looking at. All right, let's change this one to number. Good question. Uh, TH is for a table, and it stands for table header. So we can see here, uh, we're going to get to see tables. We're not going to spend that much time on it. But here we can see that we have a table tag that allows to make a table, right? And then that's this kind of here. When I hover over that table, you see that everything is sort of highlighted, right? We have that table has a T body, it has a T row, um, a table row, and a table header. Cool. Also, when you when you encounter and again like because there is so many tags, when you encounter something like this and you don't know what it is, what you could do is uh, open a new tab and then say table or whatever tag, tag HTML. And then you will find the same two uh, sources that we were looking at in JavaScript, which is the W3 schools and the MDN, which is the Mozilla Developer Network. So we can see here one is the W3 schools for HTML tables. This is going to explain to us what those are. Um, and also we have the table, the table element HTML. And this one is the MDN. Again, these are the two sources, two main sources for web development. And, and everything, everything is, is, is there. Okay, so let's do, let's do this one. This one was fun. Um, change the text that says create a posting. I make it, make that link go somewhere else. So let's look at that one. Create a posting. Where is that? Oh, this one. So when I click here, it's going to take me to this, which is like a form where I can pick where I'm, where I'm at, what um, neighborhood, etc., to basically create a Craigslist post. But this said, the challenge was make this go somewhere else. So first, let's let's see what this is. So I'm gonna right click, inspect. And then if we look at here, we seem to have an ally element. And inside that ally element, we have an A tag, which is the anchor tag, which is, again, allows to link to other places. Um, and then here, this has a peculiar aspect, which is we have the A tag, it has an ID, and it has something called an href. And here we, have, we see a link. So let's try to visit this link. Uh, we can right click and I'm going to open a new tab. Okay, this took me to the same form that uh, 
that I would go to if I clicked. So then let's, what happens if I change this? Uh, let's do double click. Oh, double click takes me there. Edit as, as HTML. Let's see, edit as HTML. Okay, then I have access to the entire tag. I'm gonna change this from from that to google.com. Now I'm going to click outside to sort of save, um, and then I'm gonna click on this. Now I took it to Google. Say that again. Right click. Oh, so if I wanted to open it in a new tab. Oh, like here. If I come here, also note note that when I go back, all the changes that I did are lost, right? Because practice is not our website. So let's go back here. We could also, so yes, there are a few ways in which we could do this. We could also do, do edit, right click edit attribute. That allows us to have access to this here again. Maybe I want to link to my GitHub. GitHub.com slash. Now I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to click here. And that is going to take me to my GitHub. So href, I don't remember what it stands for. Uh, but let's look it up. It's something reference. That's as um, href. The most important attribute of the a element is the href attribute, which indicates the link destination. By default, links will appear as follows in, fall in all browsers. An unvisited link is underlined in blue. Visited link is underlined in purple. We have all seen this. And an active link is underlined in red. So that's when you see, like, this is an active. You see that it's sort of purple. This is what we call an active link. Uh, now, see create post now is all purple without underlined. That's because they already visited that link, and so on. So again, this href is where the link is going to go to. I wanted to see, and again, here is a good recommendation is to kind of compare the two sources, W3Schools with uh, MDN. Let's see, I want to see the MDN. Now I'm going to look for href. H href contains a URL, or your, a URL fragment that the hyperlinks points to. URLs are not restricted. Um, we can also, for example, we could also have, like, the A, the a tag um, is not restricted to only HTML. Have you seen those websites where you, like Google Maps or Yelp, that when they have a phone number and then you, you click that phone number, uh, if you're on your phone, it's going to, like, ask you to call? That is also an H tag. Uh, we could do that if... We can see here, as, as this says, URLs are not restricted to the web, HTTP-based documents, but can use any protocol support by the browser. So we could also say, um, I think it's phone, phone, let's see. Let's try that one. I want this to, to be an HTAP, but to a phone number. So I'm going to do phone, and then I'm going to put phone number here. Let's see if I remember that correctly. So once I click, oh, so no, it's not, it's not the phone. Phone link. Oh, I had to do tell. So it's tell for telephone. So let's do that. Oh, no. Right click, edit it. Attribute. I'm going to do tell. And I think it's just like that. Let's see. Tell, column, and then the number. Let's try that. Let's see. 
So now I have tell, let's try. Now it's asking me to open FaceTime to make the phone call from my computer. If you're on your phone, it's going to ask you if you want to call. So again, the A tag, the anchor tag, um, is one of the most important uh, in the web. Any questions here so far? Cool. We can see that to almost every element, we could add attributes. Like the H tag has some href attribute. And that H href attribute modifies the behavior of that tag. We're going to see the ID attribute, which is uh, useful for uniquely identifying an element in a website. Uh, we're also going to see the class attribute, like this one, which uh, allows to sort of group elements in a page, say um, all these elements are of the class header, for instance. If we wanted to, um, if we wanted to style all the headers, let's say red, uh, and we're going to get to, to that when we see HTML. We could say, okay, the class for it, this H tag is going to be header red. And then with that, I, I'm able to sort of grab all the um, elements that are of that same class and apply something to that. Okay, so let's see what else do we have here. Cool, let's, let's get to write our, own, our own first HTML document. So for writing HTML, we still use our text editors, whether that's Atom or VS Code. Um, let me go to my terminal. Um, I have my core folder. And then go to unit two, which is a folder that I had already created. Um, and I'm going to do I don't know where I had that HTML intro, so I'm just going to create a new one. HTML intro 2. Here and then here I'm going to just create a HTML file, which is touch just the same way that we were able to create a JS file. Touch, I'm um, going to call it index.html. You can call it anything you want. Um, I'm going to call it index.html and then I'm going to open my text editor code here. As everyone was able to open up their text editor with a .html file. Sure. Um, so anywhere in your computer, um, maybe create a folder called HTML intro, CD into that folder, then create a file called anything you want that HTML. I call mine index.html. And then open that file with your text editor. Just the same way that we've been doing it with JavaScript files. So what I did was touch index.html and then I open my text editor in that in the current folder with code that period and then this popped up on the left. Let me know once you're here. Say that again. You're supposed to create an HTML file and have it open. Cool. So, do we all have the HTML file? It's an empty file. Say that again? Yes, but you might 
you may say atom space period. This is my text editor is code. Okay, everyone here have an HTML empty file. Okay, so now here what we have is this. Well, if we want to write HTML code, uh, the first thing we we start with is the dot type. And we say HTML. This is for the browser to know that the file that is about to see is an HTML file. This one. Dot type HTML. Now, right after that, we have our HTML tag, which is indicates to the browser, okay, everything that's inside this tag is going to be HTML code. Please see it as HTML. HTML. So we have a doc type and HTML tag. Now we also have the head tag. The head tag is for us to tell additional information to the browser, but that we don't necessarily show to the user. Yes, Cameron? Yes, this is an exclamation mark. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, sure. So let's do head, and we're going to add a title on oh, my first website. We're going to see uh, where this will appear. Again, in the head tag, what we put is uh, what is known as metadata. It's data that is part of our website, but it's, that is not going to be displayed to the user in the content of our website. So we'll see what that means. And then after that, we have the body tag. The body tag is where actually the content we want the user to see once to our website will live. Everything will be in the body that, that we want the user to see. Okay, now let's do, uh, I'm just gonna do an H1 that I'm going to call welcome to my website. Note that once we open a tag, the closing tag has a slash followed by the name of the tag. This is how we close the tag. We have the opening tag, no slash. The closing tag has this slash right here. That is how we say this is where it starts and this is where it ends. Doc type is a special one. Uh, you can see that first you know you know that because it has this exclamation mark and it also has uh, it doesn't have like one name, it has two things, which is doc type and HTML. So this one is this one is special. And there is not there's not many that are special like, like this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, now how do we see this website? This is we're writing the code, but well, you know our users don't understand this code. So to open this website, what we can do is go to the folder where we created it. Um, if you are in the terminal, you could do open period. This is going to open the finder where your file is. And you see the index.html, right? Um, and then you could do, I think you could double click it's going to open copy path. Copy path will open my clipboard the location of this file, and then I could just go through my browser, open a new tab, and paste what I have in my clipboard. So there's a ton of ways in which you can in which you can open 
an HTML file. Was everyone able to open their file? Yes. Oh, sure. Thank you. Let's take a five minute break. You see this tank? There's a this one here? Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, was, it, was everyone able to open their file in the browser? Cool, so if we go back to our browser and our website, we could do the same thing which we were, we were doing with Craigslist, which is inspect the source code. So we could do a right click, inspect, and this should match exactly what we typed in our code. Do we all see that? He matches exactly. Well, actually not exactly. I have like the dot type capital and then uh, Chrome made it lowercase. So that means that I will believe I'll believe Chrome, which is the the real way. The good way is to do it lowercase. Say that again. Uh -huh. Nice. So Michael saw on MDN uh, that the documentation says every I have all the HTML tags are case insensitive. What that means is I can type HTML like all capital, and I refresh my website. Uh, I just need to. I don't need to open it again. I just need to go back and refresh it. And it still shows HTML uh, lowercase. So yes, HTML. Thank you for that, Michael. HTML tags are case insensitive. You could um, HTML even like that. Go back to your website. You could do refresh. You could also hit Command R to refresh with your keyboard, so you don't have to uh, go there with the mouse. Right, so yes, all HTML tags are case insensitive. However, it is good practice to write them uh, lowercase. We can see that even though I type HTML capital case, when I go to the browser and I refresh, uh, Chrome will show it to me in lowercase. So yes, it doesn't matter, but um, good practice is to do it in lowercase. Mm -hmm. Any questions here so far? Yes. There was a way, I remember from the lesson, to comment things out so I could write notes on the slide, but I can't remember. Uh -huh. So that is in, in the lecture notes. You will find that. But I think even if you're using Atom, you could comment the same way you commented JavaScript code. It doesn't work? Oh, OK. Command C? No. I'm, I'm sure that the people on Atom can install something that will allow you to comment the same way you commented in JavaScript. Um, it will add the exclamation point. Right. Yes. So on code, I could do command slash, and then it commented that line. And this is what a comment looks like in HTML. Angle bracket. Uh, left angle bracket, exclamation mark, two dashes, and then the content of my comment. And then I close that comment with two dashes, uh, right angle bracket. So if, if, um, if command slash doesn't work for you, uh, we could talk after, and we could see how we can um, modify your editors to be able to do that, because it's quite handy. So OK. So here I want to show you that what I mean by the head is metadata, right? It's data that 
uh, will not be this, this directly displayed in the body of our website, but that is that is useful um, for a website for multiple reasons. So, for instance, and we're we're not going to get too much into this, but the head is uh, where you will put information that uh, says what this website is about for um, a search on Google to find it easier. Right? Google will scan your website and will take will look at the head for information that uh, about your website. So one of those is the title, and then this title is displayed to the user. This title is displayed to the user, but not in the website, not in the content of the website, but in the title of the tab. See that this text here? This one? Now you change that and go to refresh your website, that will change. See here? So again, in the head we put metadata. Um, For once we once we start to write HTML, um, once we start to write JavaScript file that we want to use in our websites, we will add that uh, in our head because a, uh, a piece of JavaScript is not is not something we, we, that we want to show the user. For instance, right? it's something that we want uh, to work in the browser to enhance enhance behavior, but we don't necessarily want to show the code. Uh, Okay, so let's go, let's keep going. Uh, we saw, again, this is how we can make comments. All of this is in the lecture notes. Um, if you read the lecture notes before coming in, um, this shouldn't be that surprising. Cool, so we wrote that one. Now let's look at paragraphs. So we just made our first website. Now let's look at some paragraphs. So let's type Let's type a let's type something over here. I'm just gonna type it like that. Uh, this my first website. How awesome! Email me if you want me to. Build a website for you. So I added this text. This is my first website. How awesome. Email me if you want me to build a website for you. Yes, Joey? Are you supposed to read stuff here? Thank you. Yes. Okay, everyone has this on their website. You can you can put any text that you want. But I just made this one up. Uh, and also, it's important that for this you actually type. Don't copy and paste what we have in the lecture. Um, yes, because you will your your brain remembers better if you type it. Okay, so let's go to our website in the browser. And let's refresh our page. Now I have, this is my first website. How awesome, email me if you want me to build a website for you. Any, anything interesting about this? Like, it's, as Jonathan said, everything is on the same line. Even though in the code, everything is in separate lines. Do we all agree? that um, our code has separate lines for the pieces of text. However, when we render this in our web browser, uh, we have everything in the same line. Why is that? Will you? You only need the paragraph, yes, but why is it that everything displays on the same line? Yes, yeah, sure. A little bit louder. I think it's HTML ignores white space. Correct. H HTML 
ignores white face and new lines. So here I could add as many spaces as I want. Uh, now I go to the browser, still going to ignore it. Go to the browser and we could look at here, let's look at inspect our code, body. We can see that our body has all that and it even has all the space. See how awesome and then at the bottom we have email me if you want me to build a website for you. It shows in the source code, it shows that white space, but in, once the browser is interpreting your HTML, uh, it completely ignores uh, your white space and new lines. So that's important to remember. HTML ignores um, new lines and white space. We could even see what happens if we do this. Let's see if it ignores I have two spaces here in between how and ask. Let's see if it puts one. I'm actually not sure about this. Let's, let's try it. Uh, I'm refreshing my website, and it seems that it, it ignored that extra space. See, now we have only one space here. Uh, we can see in our code, we, this seems to be two white spaces in our source code, right? But when we go to HTML, we can see that there is actually only one. So again, HTML will ignore uh, more than two white spaces and new lines. But if we want this text to appear in separate lines, we have a tag for that. And that tag is the paragraph tag. So, Let's do, let's do this. Let's add this into a paragraph. Oh, let me disable the autocomplete that I have. Cool. So I'm going to add the p tag. I uh, start this p tag starts on line eight here. I'm going to close it here with again slash and then the name of the tag. Let's do the same for the rest. Is everyone with me here? We have a, a, a page with three paragraphs. In. Now let's go to our browser, refresh that page, and there you have it. Now the content uh, of the website is in separate lines. We have one paragraph, this is my first website. How awesome, email me if you want me to build a website for you. Let's inspect this. Um, and then there we have that. We have three paragraphs. We can hover over them and see which one is which. Any questions here? Yes, Michael. Oh, this. Uh, I'm not sure actually. Double equal. Zero. Use zero in the console to refer to this element. Oh, there you go. That's cool. Um, cool. So let's look at something else that we see here. I am hovering over this P tag. Right? So there we also have, and we're going to get to this once we see more um, CSS. But once you click here, you also have uh, another tab. Uh, that you see called styles. Does everyone see that? In here, can you see here that there is, when I hover over here, we have like that blue line, this this blue line, and then we have this uh, kind of orangey lines. Right? 
This is because the key tag has those orange lines are what is called as margin. So a p tag has a margin at the top and at the bottom. And if we if we looked over the styles, we could see we could also see that. If we scroll down, uh, you get to this sort of graph here on the on the right, and you can hover over stuff here as well. So if this is like the inner content of the p tag. It tells the dimensions, which is good. Is good once we get to styling. We, it tells the padding. We haven't seen what that is yet. It tells the border. We haven't seen that that is. But if we hover over margin, now we see that we have that's the orangey uh, color that we see, and this has a margin top and bottom of 16 pixels. So now a p tag is what is what is known as a block element. That that is an element that will occupy the entire width of the page. You can see here that I hover over the p tag and is as wide as my pages. Right? If I if I make it even more wide, the p tags will still be that wide. Um, and the block element again is it occupies the entire width of the page and it creates a line break. Right? That is why we see that these two p tags are on separate lines. So a p tag is a block element, it occupies the entire width of the page and it creates a line break. So the, what's after it will be on a separate line. What's after or before it will be on a separate line. Any questions here? So that is the p tag. Again, for paragraphs and content that we want to display. Cool. So let's see this one. HTML headings. These are the h1 to h5. Oh, this one didn't have. Uh, initially, we were not supposed to have an h. One tag, but we already added one, but that's that's no no problem. Again, I said we our website should have only one H1 per page. Right? H1 is the main header, the main title of our website. All good websites keep that con convention of having only one, and that is important for. Um, for instance, screen readers, or for accessibility reasons, uh, once you have um, a website, you can have a screen reader that will uh, read out loud to you the content of a website. And that screen reader will look at the H1 tag to give more emphasis and to signify that that is uh, a main title, the main title of a website. And we, we, all, we, we oftentimes, want to be thinking about accessibility, how our website um, is going to be accessed by somebody with disabilities, for instance, and so on. Okay, so we saw that H1 is a main title. Now let's do a subtitle, which is um, an H3, or in this case, an H2. Let's do an H2. So I'm going to call this section of my website, I wanted to do H2 website building. Or we could call it something like services. These are the services that I offer in my website. Now go back to your website in the browser and refresh the page. Now we see that we have a services section. Under there, we have this email. Email me if you want to build a website for it. Again, H1, the main tag, the main title. Um, H2, a subtitle on that. Okay, let's uh, 
let's take five minutes to change the title of this website. Um, instead of welcome to my website, oh, where did it go? Instead of welcome to my website, say uh, put put something like this is your name's website, and then change um, add add a services uh, paragraph under the services h2 tab. Is that clear? Change the title to include your name. This is this is your name website. Um, and add another paragraph under the services for another service that you do. Maybe you do painting, maybe you do photography. Cool, let's take five minutes to do that. Cool, I see that most of you got it. Um, let's, let's keep moving. So we saw um, H1, let's, for sort of for illustration purposes, let's do H3. Uh, so let's say, again, we want our headings to have a meaning, right? We just, we don't want to add H2 for no reason or H3 for no reason. So what would be like a subcategory of services that we can include here? Any idea? Okay. Paid services. And then I need to do maybe we have another one. Um on paid services. For some reason you offer an unpaid service. I mean you could be so volunteering. You, you organize a meetup. You organize a tech meetup. Uh, let's say that. Refresh our website and we have services. Let's do subtitles, paid and unpaid. Email me if you want to build a website. Unpaid tech meetup organization. Cool. Any questions or comments here so far? Okay. So we saw, we've seen P tags, H1 or header tags. Let's look at some of the styling tags. Um, again, as I said at the beginning, these are for provide an emphasis in our text to make our text bold or in um, italics. So let's look at this. Uh, let's do how exciting. Instead of 
how awesome I want to do I want to have how awesome to be bold in my text here. Let's see. How awesome this I want it to be bold. So for that, what we need to do is wrap awesome or whatever word you want to uh, make bold and you wrap it in an em tag. Now, once you do that, go back to your browser and refresh the page. Oh, that made it um, in ita italics. Yeah, strong is, is strong as ball. Mm -hmm. We have, in, in this case, I made this italics. Again, this is when um, thinking of accessibility, this is when um, screen reader will say this word with an emphasis because you said in your code, this is um, in italics, meaning you want to provide some emphasis in that text. Mm -hmm. Now, what's something that we see here for the first time with the EM tag? So, uh, sorry, a little bit louder. Correct. A tag inside another tag. The em tag is inside the paragraph tag. And this is something that we could do uh, with all HTML, which is nest, nesting tags. Right? The, the same way we can nest code in the, uh, JavaScript. Do you remember when we do like an if statement or a function, and then that function has a for loop, and that for loop has a, uh, an if statement? Uh, sort of the same. Uh, parallel we can draw here in HTML where we have a P tag and inside we have a, an EM tag. Cool? And if we think about it, we also have, see the body? The body tag has all this content inside of it, so it's nested inside. Cool. So do you remember when I said that the P tag is a block element? That is, it occupies the entire width of the page and it creates a line break before and after it? Well, the em tag is the opposite of a block tag, which is called an inline tag. An inline tag doesn't create, um, doesn't create a line break before or after, and it doesn't occupy the entire width of the page. An em is an inline tag. Let's, uh, let's do... What else can we do with uh, strong? Let's close this. Let's do, I'm gonna change, change this to the how, that's pretty strong. Let's put the how strong. Let's look at this, how it looks. Let's go to the website, uh, refresh our page. Now we have how in bold and awesome in italics. Cool. Again, uh, strong and em are inline tags. They don't occupy the entire width, and they don't create uh, a line break before and after. Any questions here? Yes, Cameron. The p tag. Uh, so you mean if I nest, if I put a p tag inside another p tag? B. Oh, I think you discovered the b tag. I think I think so. Correct. So Cameron said discovered that there is another tag that is does the same thing that the strong tag does, which is bold, uh, bolding a, a piece of text, and that is the b tag. I'm not sure if there's any differences. Let's do B tag versus strong. Strong and ball. Both exist and have a different meaning. The B tag is for offset text conventionally style in ball. If you read deeper into the details, you will see it adds without conveying any extra emphasis or importance. So there is a difference. We'll need to go into the weeds as to 
to see uh, what that difference is. And it's about it's about semantics. It's about how it's yeah, sure. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah, as as Sarah was saying, people that uh, might have a a visual disability don't know what bold is, right? Because they they haven't seen it. Uh, so this can convey that once we have a screen reader uh, looking at our website, speaking out loud the content of our website, then the strong and the P tags we might have different meanings. Okay, so let's do. Any other questions before we move on? Yes, Malik. Ooh, that's an interesting one. How could we do that? Like, can we make a can we make a piece of text bold and italic at the same time? What do we think? Yes, absolutely. So let's make let's do awesome be in italic and also strong. Let's refresh our page. There we have it. Italics and ball. Joy? Does the order of the closing pattern mm. make a difference? Uh, they don't. If what what Joey is saying, like if I wrap it first in strong and then in EM, would it make a difference? The answer is no difference. <coughs> Any other questions? See him? A, a little bit louder? Uh huh. Oh, so Sihan is asking can we make H2 or any title also bold or also Italian? What do we think the answer to that one is? Suspecting? Yes. That's correct. So we could do strong here. By default, um, by default, H or heading tags are already bold, so I'm not sure what this is going to produce, but let's try. It. This is something also good on HTML, like and even even JavaScript, like you could experiment. Nothing is going to break. You're not going to um, make something bad. So we can see here that I made the H too strong and it didn't do anything. Again, that's because by default, uh, headers are already bold. So let's try to make it italic. Yeah. Now it's in bold and italics. Nice. Cameron? Uh, I was wondering if there's a quick way to wrap words in a sentence. Yeah. If I want to add another service. Let's say I do, I also do. Oh, my battery is about to die. Um, what's another service that I could do? I also do carpentry. So let's do P. Now, if I want that to be my third, um, an inconvenience that I have here is that I have to manually go in and say three and then change the tag made up speaker to four. And then I can refresh and then I have my list. Right? But that's too much work. Having to go in and change my website every time that I add a service and also having to remember the order in which these are. Right? So HTML has a handy tag which is the list tags, which is the OL for unordered list, and UL, no, OL for order list, and UL for unordered list. OL, order, UL, unordered. Okay, so let's convert this list, which is not truly a list. So it's a list for a user that might be seeing this, and then seeing one, two, three, but it's not truly an HTML list. So let's make an HTML list out of this. First is, you want the, uh, I want it to be number. So for, for that, I will prefer an order list over an unordered list. And we're going to see the difference. So out L, 
Also, I want to wrap all my list items in the OL, so I'm going to close it here at the bottom. OL. Now, instead of P tags, what I want is what? Li, correct. Instead of P tags, I'm going to change this to Li. Li, Li, um, Li. Now, let's go back to the browser. To the browser. But what, first, is everyone with me here? Order list with the list items that are, the services that we offer. Okay, so save that. Go back to your website and the browser and refresh the page. Now we have a list. What do we see here? Yes, is that? We have the numbers twice. We have the numbers twice. That's correct. That is because uh, HTML and all browsers, if they see an order list, they are going to add numbers to it so that you don't have to. So in this case, I'm going to remove my numbers because, well, HTML will do it for me. So let's save that, let's refresh. There we have our list. Also, you might have noticed some other differences. Uh, I should have kept, let's see if, yes, so that. There's a less space in between each. Correct, so if you remember the, when we had P tags, there was more space separating every, every, ta every paragraph, right? Do we remember that we saw that um, P tags have a margin at the top and the bottom. Well, allies or list items don't have that. Right? Also, this was indented to the left. There is some space here. Before, everything was to, uh, this was intended to the right, sorry. There was no space on the left once we have key tags. So again, all the tags uh, that exist in HTML is to convey meaning. Right? And we want to use the appropriate tags for conveying the meaning that we want to our users. So let's inspect this uh, using our inspect tool. Let's see. I'm going to lower this. Now here we have an OL. You can see that the OL element adds some margin here at the top, that orange line. And at the bottom, and it also has this green section, uh, which are the numbers, right? That that green section is a padding that we that by default the browser will add to all the lists to give it that um, look of a list of a true list. And we can see that the allies, as as I said before, they're no no longer p tags, therefore they don't have margin at the top and at the bottom, right? We can see that once we hover over them, it's just this blue square. Any comments on this? Yes, Lewis? Um, if you wanted to say, uh, specify that you work in both analog and digital environment, and build a sublist underneath number two uh -huh. with bullet points for those two things, would you call That's correct. So basically the question is, can we nest lists? What do we think? What would we suspect? Yes, we can do, we could nest list and we're going to get to that. But here, I guess I wanted to show you is that the numbers are made automatically by the browser in HTML. So if I change, now let's say my photography and the list comfortable with, so I'm going to put it last. Um, I move photography to the last spot. I'm going to go to my, to my browser. I'm going to refresh. Now photography is number four. And I don't have to keep track of the numbers, which one is uh, four and which one is three, which one is one. So do we see the advantage of using a 
order list versus manually typing the numbers in p tags. Cool. So the question Douglas suggested is, can you nest lists? So let's say we offer photography, but we also we offer analog photography and digital photography, which are two kinds. So in here, oh, actually let's put let's put uh, photography back as the second li. Now here, I'm going to create an order or unorder list for. Um, Analog and digital photography. What do you think? Like in this case, what does make should should we use an order list or an unorder list? And why? Right, I wanna say I do I do an analog photography, which is like the old school photography, uh, where you have to reveal uh, you have to do something with the film, like put it in a dark room. Right, and you could also do digital. I could also do digital photography, which is with my phone or with my digital camera. On order list, because everything's sort of in the same content. But like, I guess, like, let me ask this: When do we want an order list? Correct. As Yohanna said, when there are some steps, or where you want to convey this comes first and this comes second. Uh, that's when we want to use an order list. For steps, um, what else? Maybe date? Correct. And in this case, once we, we want to add that we do analog and digital photography, those are, um, we can think of them, depends on, on your specific case, but we can think of them as they don't have any, uh, there's not one more important than the other one, or there's not one that comes before the other one. So we could, in that case, when we have that relationship where all the items are sort of at the same level, we don't need to convey order. Uh, we do an unorder list. So let's do UL here. Let me close that. UL, again, inside, LI, digital, close that LI, another LI. Analog. See how we also, just like in JavaScript, we want to indent lines to say this li is inside the UL. The browser and HTML don't care about your cases. This is, again, because we want our our code will be read by other developers. We want our code to be um, easily readable by humans. Remember that it's really easy to write code that machines understand, but it's harder to write code that other humans understand. So let's try to refresh our page. Let me see. Let me put this back here. So you can see the code. Now I'm going to refresh this. Oh, what happened here? We have a bug, our first HTML bug. The UL tag, closing tag. Okay. Wait, you have to. How do you survive? That's good. Because I, I used to like video games too, but my mom couldn't buy the console because it was expensive. And now. I'm really thankful that she didn't get me the video game because, because I, I wasted I waste the last time. And I think, you know, thanks to that, thanks to that I'm here. Um, they're, they're fun, but it's, uh, at the same time, they could, they, they could take a lot of time. And it's just wasted. Sometimes it becomes a lot of time. So, uh -huh. 
one of these devices. I, 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 I get to the um, what do you like besides video games? Um, yeah, you like to learn how to create games and how to create applications. Did, did, like, did your mom tell you about the game that she was building? The game and game? That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, like this is, this is what we're learning here. Applications and, and from here, anyone, mom could create video games in that what they want, or they could create other applications. Um, I, I saw you, you were trying to like look at the source code, like follow some stuff. Yeah. That was, that's cool. That's so, yeah, so, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> This is this is this is the future. Go grab some water. Go to the restroom. Okay, welcome back. So we were saying that we had our first HTML bug. And what is this bug about? Like, we we're seeing that instead of having four elements that we had, or four list items, we now have two and everything else goes sort of under the digital photography. So, as Brianna said, we were closing we didn't close our UL correctly here. Right? We can see that the UL tag starts here and it's supposed to end over here. But I forgot the letter the letter L. Right? Therefore I didn't truly close it. JavaScript, uh, not JavaScript, HTML uh, will just ignore that and take everything else as LI. So that's another difference that we have between JavaScript and HTML. Um, HTML doesn't break with a loud red error. It just tries to assume uh, what you mean, what you meant, uh, but it doesn't it doesn't break or anything like that. It just not it's not going to display the content in the way that you intended. Right. So now we have. That photography, we do digital and analog photography. Any, any, anything that we note here? Any, anything interesting that you want to comment on a nested list? 
Yeah, yeah. stimulus. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good observation. Uh, what what Douglas is saying is when we when we inspect the OL, the OL has this margin, orange margin. But when we look at the EOL, the EOL doesn't have that margin. See, no orange, just the blue and the green. Uh, that's a good observation. I didn't didn't remember that. So when you have a nested list, uh, your browser will recognize that and will not add the margins to it. Mm -hmm. Yes? Would you be able to also swap out the uh, unordered list for an ordered list and would that be used in the spaces? Or is it always going to like, swoosh it down? If it's, if it's a nested list, we'll always uh, remove the margins. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's a order list within an order list or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And we could just keep going in nesting if, if, if your website requires. Um, also, you can see that an on order list, instead of numbers, it has bullet points. Right? In this case, white. Uh, with with uh, CSS, we could style them uh, in any way we want. We could have, instead of Let's say instead of bullet points, we could have arrows or triangles or any anything you want, basically. Any other questions? Comments? Yes, you can. If I put it, uh, what should I do here? to experiment with that. You push you put an H three here? Oh let's see this. Um well so this is H three. Inside an ally like that. Oh. Uh huh. Where do you have that heading? Right there. Right here. Okay. And then let's put something here. Let's try what this does. Let's close it here. Code refresh. Now we can have a subtitle in our list. Is this what you get? Cool. Yeah, we could we could break down lists uh, if it made sense for our use case where we could have a title inside of it. Mm -hmm. And it will break it. You see that it breaks it, uh, but it still cons uh, preserves the number, uh, the order of the numbers. What happens if we do this? We wrap the L, the H3 in an LI. What do you think? You think it's going to do the H3 thumbs up? You think it's going to ignore the H3 and give you an LI? Okay. So we got more votes on the, it's just going to do an LI, regular LI. Let's try. So we have now we have the number. Now it, now it interpreted that H3 as another list item, uh, but it still displayed it as a title or as a heading. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. And an UL to an LI. Um, Yes, you can you can go crazy. <laughs> you can you could have um, I guess like what if we do this? What if we have the photography here? This is an LI 
and we sort of actually make it inside. So I'm going to close the li here, over here. Let's see what this gives us. Instead of, I was closing this photography li here, uh, but now I'm closing it down here. So I'm going to nest this. Is this sort of what you were uh, meaning? Cool, let's try it. Let's try this. Seems that it gave us the exact same thing. Uh -huh. So we could we could have done it. Um, well, if we look at if we look at the source code, let's do inspect. There is one difference. There is there is no visual difference in what we see, but now we see that once I hover over here, li, um, that li. Um, compresses the entire this entire blue area, which in turn inside it has the URL. So here, this will be another way to accomplish uh, that same task of having it nested. I think it's it's kind of hard to see where this could be used. Like, where would you pick to do it nested, like truly nested, versus just an ally and then the the URL underneath. Um, there might be some, I guess one advantage will be, let's imagine that this is, you want to color this Li with uh, red or any other color. Um, and you want to not only color the Li photography, but also the sub elements in that sub list. In that case, it will, it will be better if you have it like this, where the UL is actually inside an Li we can see, yeah, again, you can see it here, li, and inside that li we have eul. And then everything will become um, that color that you want. Yes, you're in. Uh -huh. uh, there might be some differences in the code, compare the code. So this li starts here, but closes over here. Any other ideas, questions, comments? Owen? Uh, yes, uh, we're, we're not going to get into that today. But if you, if you, if you poke around, which is, um, you could right click here and click inspect. So this is the li, but you could, if you poke around here on under styles, you can find uh, this this playlist item. Oh no, not that, not that one. Here, ol and ul list tile type circle. I think. Oh, I kind of changed this, but this is a property that once we get to CSS, you could change to squares or. Uh, other properties, and it will change the style of the of the of the bullet points. Mm -hmm. But this this what we're looking at here is CSS, which we're going to be seeing later on. Yes, Cameron. Um, you know, like oh, yeah, that was something that Michael mentioned as well, which is. This this year, uh, we can ignore that for now. But you can see that it says use money money sign zero in the console to refer to this element. That is, if you wanted to grab this element with HTML with JavaScript, which we're going to get to do, uh, not today, but we're going to get to do. Um, you could grab it with dollar sign and equal zero. Uh -huh. And we're going to see like that's when that's when this gets interesting when we actually change the content of a website with JavaScript. That, that is like, that, for me that's the most exciting part. Once we, once we get to um, control our websites with JavaScript. Okay, so we saw lists. Uh, now, I want you to create, let's take five minutes to create a list 
uh, that is going to be your to-dos and add at least five to-dos to that list. Um, I'll, I'm going to let it up to you to do it order or unorder list. But So you're going to create two lists. One order that is going to be, you can pick whether you want to do to-dos, shopping lists, or anything like that. And another list, which is going to be an order, an unorder list. So we want to do two lists, one order and one unorder. But I want you to decide the content of those lists. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, one more time. Does the list, like items, without closing the Oh, uh, so what Bridget is suggesting is what happens if I forget to close this year? Is that correct? Yeah. Let's see. I forgot to close this list items for digital and, al and analog. Um, I'm going to refresh my website. And they still display. But this, we shouldn't write code like that. We shouldn't write, we shouldn't let unclosed hacks. What happens is that Chrome, because it's uh, smarter than, than all websites, than all browsers, will close the tag for me. Chrome is helpful and wants me to uh, write good code. So if we look at digital and analog, see, even though I didn't include that in, the, in my code, uh, Chrome does add it. Chrome will close your tag. Uh, but again, it's not good practice to leave unclosed tags. So create two lists, one or order and one unorder, and add items of your liking in them. Maybe even create another um, heading for that. Let's take five minutes to do that. One idea for a list will be a to-do, so maybe another one will be a shopping list.
Okay, cool. So, do we have any questions or comments of making this ordered and unordered list? Anybody found something that would like to share? No? Cameron? Mm. Nice. So Cameron found out that when an or an unordered list is not nested, the bullet points are solid, are not like in this case, which is they are kind of white um, or hollow, hollow white. Um, when uh, when an unordered list is not nested, we'll display the bullet points as solid black. Mm -hmm. Nice. Anybody else like to share? Cool. Okay, so let's move on to the next HTML tag, which is the anchor tag or the link. Again, as we said, this is one of the major building blocks of the internet that allow us to link documents to each other. Um, this is how you navigate the internet. This is your search board, if you will, uh, for navigating the web. Okay, so we can see here an example of an HTML that has an H2 links, uh, an H tag with an href property. Uh, that is going to be where that link is going to be pointing to. Then we have the text that we want that link to have. And then we close the A tag. Cool. So let's say in our, in our website, we want to add a link to uh, where they can find us anywhere else online, which is to say we could add a link to uh, our GitHub account. Imagine, imagine this is... This is our personal website, right? We have the services that we offer, but we also want them, we also want a visitor that comes to our website to find us on LinkedIn if they want to connect, or to look at GitHub profiles, see what, they, what we're working on. Maybe our Twitter or, or Instagram accounts, right? So the A tag, uh, the anchor tag is the one, the one that is going to allow us to do that. So let's add that. Let's go back to our, our code. Now, that's what, that was services. Now I'm going to add another um, H2 because they're in, sort of in the same level, right? I have divided my website into like the main header, which is H1, sort of somewhat of an introduction that says, this is my website, how awesome. And then I have two H2s, which one, one of them being services and the other one will be links, H2. Okay, so in here, let's say that, let's open it in the browser, let's refresh. Now I have my links um, header. Okay, and under here, I want to add links to my LinkedIn, my uh, GitHub, and so on. So I'm going to add one, and then you're going to add the rest. So let's say I'm going to add my links for you're going to be add, I'm going to add one like let's say I do photography and I have my photography uh, I put it on Instagram so I'm going to have a link that will go to Instagram for my photography so I'm going to do okay again again we have an A tag we want the A tag to have an href we're, which is where this link is going to go once you click it. Um, for now, I'm going to leave the href empty. I'm going to add here, I'm going to close my a tag so that I don't forget. Now, in the middle is where you want to put the text that this link will display. Um, I'm going to do something like my photography or my photos. Yeah. Okay, now let's do that. Save it and let's go back to the browser. Let's refresh. Oh, what happened? We have another bug. 
my photo is disappearing in the list. Right, so I put it on, it's not under the H2, it's still inside the OL. So let's move it. Oops. Put it under the H2 links. Save that. Refresh my page, and now I have links. So, what happens if we have a, a link or an H tag, an A tag without an H ref? What happens when I click this link? Do you click it? Do it. Have an H tag with no H ref or just the H ref empty, and then click the link. What do you see? A little bit louder? Page refreshes. Let's see it. I go to the top. Right, this is an href that doesn't take me anywhere. Right, it takes me to where I already am. Right? So this is not a very useful H tag. So I wanted to go to a different website. So I'm going to go to my Instagram account. Uh, just, I'm going to take this one. Imagine this is my, my photo catalog. You know, I took that URL from there, I copied it, and I'm going to paste it in here. This, will, this is that account, this is my account. Now, I have an H tag, uh, an A tag with an href uh, called my photos, and that's going to take me to this URL, to my photo catalog. Now I'll save that. Oops. Save your HTML file. Refresh your browser. Now click on that link. It should take you to that. Uh, website. Cool. So now, any questions here so far before you do it yourself? Okay, so add three or two more links that are going to be pointing to your GitHub, your Twitter if you have Twitter, or your Instagram if you have Instagram, and your LinkedIn. And you could even add more if you want of, of any kind. This is about you getting uh, hands on um, with this. So let's do at least three tags. Add at least three links that take you somewhere else. Uh, it could be your LinkedIn, your GitHub, etc. cetera. Let's take five minutes for that. And probably not gonna take five minutes.
okay, what did we find by creating these links? Anything interesting that you found? Please share it with the class. Yes, ma'am. So that they're on separate lines. So let's let's see what happens once I copy this. Um, imagine this is a link to my LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn, I think, will be. My LinkedIn. Uh, if I do this, now I go to the browser and I refresh. Now I have them on the same line. No. You may or may not want that, right? And do you remember what kind of element is a p tag? I think I, I think I heard it here. It's a block element. What does it mean that it's a block element? It takes up the entire uh, space, the entire width of the page. So what does that say about What's the opposite of that? What's the opposite of a block element? An inline element, that's correct. That, that, that suggests that A tags are inline elements, just like strong or EM. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, there's, I'll let you Google that. There's another property that you could have to the A tag that will make it open in a new tag, in a new tab instead of changing the current one. Uh -huh. So here, as um, Brianna suggested, we could wrap this A, A tags in paragraphs uh, by doing this. Let's do this. Now I wrap the anchor tags with the p tags, and they become they because a p tag is a block element, occupies the entire width and makes a break line. Um, we see it in different lines. So there are multiple ways in which you, in which you can accomplish this. Uh, one such way is this one with a p tag, right? You could also some of you found an interesting tag which is the br tag is it br i think yeah, yeah. br if you hover over here i think most most of them should show what it says the br element represents a line break i don't remember exactly what it stands for but it has it has a name that makes sense um, so this br tag will add a line break. So if I do that at the end here as well. Now I go here, I refresh. Now I have my list again. But now, because they are not in a P tags, they don't have uh, a margin, right? So there's, they look a little bit cramped, right? You may or may not want that in your website. Um, if you want some margin, uh, you will leave it in a p tag. Or something else we could we could have done is use the list, right? Use the list of links as well. Uh, any other comments here? Yes, Joy. The PR tag. I see sometimes they have PR space slash. Hmm. So, oh, so the BR tag is an interesting one. Uh, one thing that we note about is that we don't need to close it. Um, so there is no closing, corresponding closing tag for the BR. Um, let's see, let's see if I'm correct, or let's see, let's see what the browser says about the BR if I inspect uh, BR. Okay, so I was I was trying to see if it will put it will add a slash at the end. Um, so it seems that there's two ways in which you could do a BR tag, which is that, or you could also have like this. The space uh, doesn't really matter, uh, but this should still 
it was the same result. I just added sort of that slash at the end to sort of signify this is a tag that um, what we call a self-closing tag. We're going to see some of those. Um, self-closing tag. So let's see if that still works. Refresh the page. Uh, let's scroll down. And we see, uh, let's refresh again. Let's see, VR, even though I added in my code the slash, um, Chrome is still not showing me the slash. So that, that is up to you to either include that slash here at the end or not. I personally wouldn't include it because if Chrome doesn't include it, I wouldn't include it. Mm -hmm. So you could even do it like that, but just like this. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? They are welcome. Yes, Jan. Well, um, that's a good question. Like, why why don't we want to close an open and a VR and close a VR? If we think about it, what we have here, like OL or U or LIs, these are sort of container tags. They have something inside, right? And that's when we that's when we want to open here, put everything that's going to be inside, and then close down below, right? But when we have a BR that just represents a space, we don't want anything inside that space. We just want we just want the new line. And in that case, uh, that's one of the reasons why we don't open and close the BR because it doesn't have anything inside. We don't want it to have anything inside. Mm -hmm. This is for just adding the line break. And if we think, if we look at here, you can see like if I hover over the BR tag, it's it shows this thing very small here. It says it's zero pixels wide and 18.29 pixels high. That's the BR. Is this you can see that it doesn't even add anything. It adds the, the new line, but it's not um, we can see that nothing is being truly highlighted. All right, so again, the BR adds uh, a line break. Let's see your tag HTML. Let's see if I'm forgetting anything about it. Oops. Developer, the line break element. That's what was. That's what it's called. Characterization is for writing a poem. Or an address where division of lines is significant. You can see here this paragraph, um, where instead of having each line in a different paragraph, they just break down the lines by doing the br tag. I think you can see here how they add. Um, they format an address in a website using BR as well. Um, there's some accessibility concerns. Okay, cool. So we added those. Now the next thing that we have is the image tags. How can we add some images so that our websites are a little bit more beautiful and not so boring? So, oh, oh, let's take a five minute break and then we're going to get back to images. Thank you. 
In that case, instead of like not close, I think a better approach would be having another number that is just still close. Okay, let's go the last half an hour before we go to lunch. Um, we're going to get to see images and form. That's the only thing that we have. In the afternoon, we're going to be working in the lab to exercise everything we've seen so far. Um, that's it. So let's look at the image tag. So the IMG tag is, as its name is, is probably named, allows us to insert an image in our websites. I see that some of you uh, are already looking at this, which is great. Um, so let's add an image to our website. Uh, I feel like I would like to add that image at the top. Images are most of the time, like when you have like a newspaper, it's like the image at the top. Oh, well, first the title and then the image. Um, so that seems like a good idea. So for an image, I'm going to add it here before my services. 
uh, we had the ing tag. And just like the a tag has an href attribute, um, image uh, has another attribute, which is where the image is going to come from. That attribute is not href. That attribute is called src. SRC stands for source, and that goes with quotes. Now, an image tag is a self-closing tag. So what does that mean? That means that I don't need a closing image tag. I close an image tag like this. It's what is known as a self-closing tag. OK, now let's do this. Let's see what happens in our browsers. Let's make this small. Let's go to our web page. Let's refresh this. So did you see the change? There, there was a change. Something happened here. But um, let's remove it. I'm going to comment the image. I'm going to refresh. Now we can see the, do you, do you guys see the difference? There's something going on here, which is, I don't have an image, now let's include an image tag. Now I refresh, and everything moves down a little bit. So, just like an H, just like an A tag without an H ref, an image tag without a source is not very useful. Uh, it doesn't display anything. Uh, so let's have let's actually inspect this. Let's see if the image tag is being added. Let's see. Oh, we can see here image it's supposed to appear there, and it says that it is zero pixels wide and zero pixels high, and it says source unknown. Okay, let's make that source known. Let's grab an image from the internet. Cat picture. Um, this one is cute. I'm going to right click, copy link address, or not link address, copy image address, and then I'm going to go to my website, now my code. I'm going to paste that address here. Oh, it's kind of long. <laughs> I don't like long addresses. So let's see if we can find a better one. Let's open this. Uh, let's open image in a new tab. Okay, this is a more manageable URL. Let's close that. Go back here. Remove this and paste that URL. Okay, image source. SRC and then the image. Now we go to our website. We refresh this page and we have our cat. Yes, do this. Oh, if if you close it with just like without a slash. So I don't know if that's bad form either, but let's see what Chrome says. When we inspect it in Chrome, oh, Chrome doesn't add that um, slash at the end. So I'll say you could, you could, um, you don't need to add the slash at the end to close the image tag. If I add it. This one is an interesting one because I, I do prefer to add the slash, but if, if Chrome doesn't say anything about it, you don't need it. And in fact, I'm going to start stop using the slash. <laughs> cool. So again, this is, as we say, um, self-closing tag. Now let me ask you, is an image tag a block? Tag or an inline tag? What do you think? Raise your hand if you think it's an inline tag. Okay. 
Okay? Thumbs up if you think is a block tag. Okay, I think we have more inline that than a block. Uh, how can we find out? How can we find out if, it, if an image is an inline or a block tag? What do we know about block? Yes, Douglas? I think I got the other way around. So again, I think a block is automatically the width of whatever the space is on the website. Uh huh. That's so correct. From the inline, I guess, it just keeps going? No. The inline would just be as, as long as it needs to be. But that's a, that's a good clue because, well, is this cat occupying the entire width? No. The other, the other piece is, is this cat adding a new line before it and after it? Well, in here we don't know for sure because we have, this is in a p tag. And then this h, this basically what we have here is we have an inline element, which is the image, and we have a block element before it, which is the p tag. I think this, this image is too big. Um, we have, this is a block element, and then we have an inline element, and then we have another block element. Those two block elements that we have uh, are creating new lines for the image. But let's look at, um, so if a demonstration of that is, what happens if we do this? What happens if we put the image between how awesome, how and strong inside the p tag? Let's do, let's break down the p tag here. Now I'm gonna move the image inside that p tag. Now I'm gonna put it actually between how and awesome. What do we think we're going to see? Yes. That's it, correct. Image are inline elements. They do not occupy the entire width. They do not create block. They do not create line breaks. Mm -hmm. so that's why we see how cat ass on cat photo. Okay, so also an image should always have a very important uh, Attribute for accessibility. What's that attribute? So is that red the content? Yes. Alt. A L T. This stands for um, alternate text in case the image doesn't load, for instance, or in case somebody with a visual impairment is looking at your website, they cannot see the image. You still want to describe what the image is about. So here. Um, all images should always have an all tag in case the image doesn't load. So let's look at this. Uh, what would be a good all tag for this? Um, how do you spell kitten? Like that. Mm -hmm. Kitten. Um, what else? This is not enough of a good description. What is this? Cat doing? A, a little bit louder? Uh, portrait? But how, how could we describe the fact that it's like on top of something? Like it's in type of, uh, I don't know, it seems to be resting. Let's see, so once, once we have that trouble, let's see if this website, let's see what all tag they include. Most, it's sad because most, most websites don't do a good work at um, adding meaningful all tag, but let's try this website. Uh, let's see what they added. Uh oh. Let's inspect this one. Let's see what the all tag for this was. That, uh, let me lower this. Oh, kitty, cat, kitten, pet, animal, cute. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 to me, that's not a, a very good description of, what the, of the cat. 
like literally, uh, a screen reader will just read this to the user. Uh, I think it will be uh, kind of confusing. Um, yeah, I think this is my core domain of the English language to describe what this cat is doing. What do you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we could have picked a, a, a better image. For now, um, let's just do white kitten. Um, oh, this. Um, Let's just do that. Uh, again, I, I apologize for my poor domain of the English language. Cool. So now we have that. And again, I said the alt is important because if the image doesn't load because it was removed or something, that text will show. Or also because if you have users with a visual impairment, they're not going to be able to see your image. You want you have to describe that image to them. So now let's do this experiment. Now we have that. Everyone has an image like this. You should have an image like this inside anywhere, anywhere. It doesn't have to be inside this P tag that I have created here. The, the fact that it's in the P tag is just for demonstrating that it's an inline block, an, an inline element. Yes, it didn't work. Um, do you see? Do you see that this link works for you? We'll see. But um, try this. Try to break that link. Change something in the link, and reload your website. See what you have. Okay, what happened once you broke the link? When you break the link, it shows the description. So I'm going to try to just break that by changing this zero by a one. Now, that link doesn't work. 
Um, this could happen to your website where you added an image and then that image was not yours and the owner of that image just removed it from the internet. Now you have a broken image uh, graphic here and you see the text that describes that image. At least if, you, if your website breaks in this fashion, at least you're telling the, the user what, the, what they should expect in here. Mm -hmm. Any questions here? Okay, so let's put that back. Uh, put the zero back. Okay, cool. Now we have that. Now I want to. This is an image is too big. I don't want it to be that big. Uh, for controlling the size of an image, uh, we can have we we have other attributes. So just like source, we have another attribute called width and another one called height. So let's do those. Also, when you have a, a tag that is like this image and it's sort of long, uh, what I like to do is break it down into multiple lines by their attributes. So I'll do source here and then I'll do alt on a separate line. And I'll even put this in a separate line. Again, HTML and the browser doesn't care about these spaces that I'm doing. This is just for my developer experience and whoever is going to review my code. So, so this is more clear as to we have an image tag that has two attributes, source and alt. So as I was saying, we have another attribute called width. And here I can specify uh, the width of my image. So I'm going to say, uh, I want it to be maybe 100 pixels. You just do 100 and PX for pixels. And I want this image to have height also 100 pixels. So I want it to be 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Cool, so let's try to see how that looks like in our browser. I'm going to refresh, and we have our smaller image. Um, this image is sort of square, right? Well, like right now, it's, it's a perfect square. It's 100 height by 100 um, pixels wide. Um, you might have... What if you do this, like you want it to be 50 pixels high and 100 pixels wide. Let's refresh. Now we have our image being 50 pixels high and 100 pixels wide. But that, that doesn't look very nice, right? The thing is, when you're specifying width and height, when you specify both, um, the browser will obey you. It will say, okay, this is what you want. I'm just gonna give you what you want. Um, but we, this is an image that's sort of distorted that is not a good user experience, right? Yes, yeah, sure. Is there a way to automatically set to the screen? Uh-huh. Uh, once we see CSS, we're going to see those mechanisms. Here, what we could do is, so what we did is, by saying this picture is going to be 100 pixels wide and 100 pixels high, um, we change what is known as the aspect ratio. But the aspect ratio is how the width corresponds with the height and vice versa, right? And oftentimes we want to we want to preserve that aspect ratio because that's the aspect ratio that uh, the photographer intended this photo to be. So if we want to do that, uh, what we can do is Instead of specifying height and width, we just specify one of the two, the one that is most important to us. So let's say I want this photo to be 100 pixels wide and I don't care how high it is. So I'm just gonna remove height, um, 100 pixels wide, refresh. Now the aspect ratio is kept. Right? It looks uh, like the original image looks. Or you might also want the opposite, which is 
um, instead of 100 pixels wide, you want it to be just 50 pixels high. I'll refresh. Now the entire image is um, reduced in size to keep the aspect ratio and respect the height that you want it. Stephanie? Uh huh. Yes. Oh, so the, this description, the alternate text, will be displayed in case the image fails to load. Only in case the image fails to load? Yes. A uh, little bit louder? Oh, let's see. No, it doesn't display if I hover over the image. I could inspect it and I'll see it in, in the inspector. So if you want to display the text like right under, underneath the image, you wouldn't use the alt tag, you will just use a paragraph under the image that describes the, the image. Uh -huh. the, alt, the alternate text here is for when the image fails to load or for um, having your website be more accessible by people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. yep. Any other questions? I think there was a question here. In the middle? Um, you mean, let's move this image from here, from this P tag. No, no, like completely center? Uh, we're gonna, we cannot do that with just HTML. Well, as we could, but it will require adding more elements that just add space. Um, that is easily, more easily done with HTML. Uh, CSS, sorry. Mm -hmm. Cool. Anything else that I'm missing in the image tag? Uh, yeah, that will be with um, CSS too. Mm -hmm. CSS is all about the style and how it looks. HTML is about the content and what that is and the hierarchy of the content. Uh, but again, CSS is about how the content looks. Um, let's see if I'm forgetting anything before we go to lunch. Okay, and then after, after we come back from lunch, we're going to do forms um, and start with the exercise. Also, here, I want you to, to exercise this concept of images uh, on our website. I want you to add to the links section the image of Instagram to my photos because that's where this link is going to take me. And also add maybe the small image of LinkedIn to the link uh, my LinkedIn. Does that make sense? So, however many links you added here, uh, add also 10 images of what those links take you to. Right, exactly, like the logo of the website. Uh -huh. And then after that, let's just go for lunch and be back here at 2. That's it.